Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we have this beautiful computer on the bench that was featured in our Thrift Finds episode 4 video right there. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. Lots of cool retro tech that we found over the last several months. This particular computer, I have no idea if it works. I don't know what it is. The seller told me they didn't know what it was. They don't know if it works. They said they turned it on, powered it up, and nothing happened. So I have no idea what this is going to bring today. I don't know what's inside the computer in terms of components. So that's part of the challenge and fun today. We're going to go over this computer. We're going to look inside and see what's on the inside. And we're going to see if we can get it posting. So you know what? We have lots to do. Let's get right to it. And here's our mystery computer, because again, we have no idea what it is. So on the front, we have a badge like branding where it says premium AIC or NIC system. So if anyone knows if that's an actual brand, please let me know down in the comments. I'd be really curious to hear about it. But I mean, we it is desktop form factor. It looks in, to be in relatively good shape. I mean, outside of the yellowing and some staining on the on the metal itself, there's no real rust. There doesn't seem to be any plastic bits that are broken off or damaged. I don't know if the components work or not. We're going to work through that as we go through in today's video. So on the front here, we do have a key lock. Unfortunately, I don't have the key, but I'm pretty confident some of these were uh, universal or at the very least not, not, you know, it's in the unlock position right now, I think. So I think we're, we're good there. So we do have what looks like a megahertz display, an LCD display here that uh, would allow us to see what the clock speed of the, of the CPU is in this particular computer. And generally these kind of phased out after the Pentium era. So I mean, putting this at a 486 or earlier system, we have turbo light, we have hard disk light, power light, we have a turbo button, which works just fine. And we also have our reset button right there as well. We have a three and a half inch floppy, which as I mentioned in the Thrift Finds video, we went over this briefly, it is the same age type coloring of the plastics. So I would imagine that this is original to the system. The same thing with the five and a quarter inch drive here as well. The only thing that we have here as well, it looks like it was added later because again, the plastic yellowing is not as dark as the rest of the surroundings is this optical drive. And what I find really cool about this, I mean, obviously regular optical drives, you know, today, even back in the day in the 486 era that, you know, you had four speed drives, two speed drives with the, the, you know, you hit the eject button and the tray comes out and you're good to go. This particular model, you have to push on the front of it. It ejects a mechanism, you pull it out and you can put in the drive or the disc in the drive right there. And overall condition for what I'm seeing here looks pretty darn good. So I'm not too worried about it so far based on everything I'm seeing. So let's close that back up. But again, I've never owned one of these before. I've always seen them online or heard about them, but I love how that mechanism works just fine. And I love the cool little design in the front here. It's pretty neat. Okay, we'll flip it around the side here and see what else we have. I really need to invest in some sort of uh, turntable. Okay, we have our power switch here, a big chonky power switch, which really puts, in my mind, I usually saw these on the XD systems or the uh, 286 or 386 systems. You know, the older systems really had these type of switching uh, for an AT power supply. Okay, we'll continue on the back here. So we have what looks like a sticker here that says cylinders, heads, and sectors. That's gonna be very helpful if we need to, uh, assuming this has a hard disk in it, to get it configured. Assuming, again, that the hard disk that's in here is what was written, uh, meant for what's written here. So we have 755 cylinders, 16 heads, and 17 sectors. So without actually taking the time to figure that out to find out what the hard drive space is, I don't know just yet. Uh, but again, uh, I'll probably in editing show you what that uh, what that is. So then we have our power supply here. It looks like to take up this whole area right here, which is pretty awesome. So here we have a couple of breakouts that you unscrew and be able to mount different ports as required. So breakout ports if you had different communication ports or uh, serial ports, etc. 
So over here, we have some expansion bays. I'm just gonna bring it up here a little bit so we have a little better view. So over here, we have, looks like two COM ports. So it looks like a uh, 25 pin and a nine pin serial port here. We also have a blank bay here and we have a few of those. So it's nice to have the uh, covers in there as opposed to something missing. I mean, I have spares, but it's nice when they come with the systems. Now it looks like we have a game port, a parallel port here. So for our printer or parallel access, of course, and then our game port. And we have a graphics card by the looks of things installed, which is nice. So we'll have to take a look at that. We have another card here that looks like there's a couple audio jacks in the back. And of course we have what looks like a sound card with an additional game port. And this has a volume control on the back. And generally those volume controls really only came with the older sound cards. And again, we have the AIC or NIC systems here where it looks like a serial number that's been handwritten by probably the technician who originally set this system up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is open up this computer. And so the only thing I've done off camera, just for full transparency, is I've removed the screws. There's only about three of those screws of the many holes here populated because uh, I just want to remove them to kind of save time. So I've gone ahead and done that already. Okay, I've removed the case cover. Let's lift it up all over the case. There we go. I'm just going to put this aside. I don't see anything on the underside of it, so that's okay. Put that aside from now. And there's our first look of inside this computer. So let me change the camera angle around so we get a better view of this uh, of the system. Okay, and here is our system all opened up from the uh, aerial view and definitely <laughs> Old, old components, that is for sure. So we have our AT power supply here. It says output is 200 watts, made by Max Power. So Fruitage, or F-R-U-I-T-A-G-E, is the manufacturer by the looks of things. So we have several components in here, as we can see. I just want to see what we have in terms of uh, components inside the computer. And again, the seller stated that it does not... Uh, does not work. So definitely I want to see what we can do to get this working. So we have this card here. We have a gold star chipset here, Prime 2. It states, and these are pretty standard in back in the systems back in the day where we have these um, kind of cards uh, for all your I.O. So these would go to your serial ports that you see there in the front. This would run to your floppy and this would run to your IDE drive. Uh, in, this, in this case, it is running to a hard disk down here, which is pretty cool. Okay, and remember today our goal is not to do cleaning today. We're not going to be taking this all apart. Our goal is to try to get this system working. And so what I'm going to do is get some, some contact cleaner here and just put some in the slots because no doubt we uh, we don't have, it probably has never been done, but it looks like we have one 8-bit, or sorry, two 8-bit slots here in the motherboard that you can see here. We also have one, two, three, four, five 16-bit ISA slots here as well. We also have what looks like eight modules here for 30-pin SIM RAM. So they're fully populated here as well, which is pretty awesome. And I see, instead of a Varda battery, which is what I was really worried about this system having, we have a battery, a detachable battery right here. So it looks like an external battery that runs to a four pin header on the motherboard, which has probably saved this motherboard from getting damaged. It's a 3.6 volt high energy lithium battery warning, fire explosion or severe hazard if recharged. So do not recharge. Good to know that this is not designed to recharge. So if we need to replace that, it being on a four pin header makes all the difference for being able to replace that. So I'm just gonna leave that card out just for a moment because uh, we can start to see what else is around here. As soon as I put that in there, all those cables go back here. So over here, it looks like we have a BIOS chip. We also have, um, let's see here some, it says Headland Technology uh, is a chip here. We have our AMI BIOS from 1988, it says. We have, here we go, we do have a processor. It does say it's an AM386SX33. So there we go. We have a 386-33 computer here, everybody. We finally found out what the computer is. So that gives us a little bit of hope and, uh, and especially knowing what it is. And I see that, you know, you saw a piece of glue here. Uh, it looks like they have all the cards tap glued with some hot glue. So I'm just gonna remove that. 
because I mean, it's not doing much now anyway, so we may as well just keep it out. All right, let's take this other card out and take a look at what it is. I believe this is our graphics card. Let's take it out. Here we are. I'm gonna rock it back and forth. Yeah, so that is extremely loose. Let's fix that up right away. Okay, so we have a Trident TVGA8900C uh, card here. Um, let's see here, copyright 1991. So that's an old video card for sure. I don't know much about this card. Looks like it, it does have some VRAM that you can add on here as well. Only four of the chips are populated. So interesting to see that as well. So we have another card here. Let's remove this. This is the one with the two audio ports. So I, I think this is just a, to be honest with you, a CD-ROM controller. And uh, I say that because this IDE cable is running over to the CD-ROM. And yeah, just uh, say, so there we go. Okay, so it says here, it's a CD-ROM drive, 16-bit IF card. So interface card, I believe, is what the IF stands for. So here is the IDE port, but then you have some jumpers here. So I imagine these jumpers would allow you to switch between functionality. I'm just looking at it here. Nope. So it does say Mitsumi on the chipset. So it's probably a Mitsumi uh, drive as well. So here we have different DMA settings that are selected. Uh, do we have IRQ? Yeah, so DMA and IRQ. So it's all in that same area. So back in the day, you would go and you would select if you had hardware resource issues, uh, conflicts, you'd be able to go in and manually set those as well. So over here, we do have, it looks like an audio cable going over to the CD-ROM drive. So it's nice to see that uh, populated. All right, so our final card here looks to be our sound card. Let's, uh, let's remove that. So this computer obviously was given some sort of multimedia upgrade. So it says here on the motherboard, it says HM386SX revision 1.1. It's not a very large motherboard. I mean, it, it has a lot of functionality in terms of expansion. So yeah, overall, I mean, the board's in great shape. I'm not seeing any issues here. Uh, you know, we do have our, uh, like I said, our BIOS chip there. And you know, the thing that saved this board, I will 100% say, because I have another 386 that did have a Varda battery. And of course I had to do a bunch of bodging to it with bodge wires to fix the traces. In this particular case, we don't have that problem. Let's put everything back into the system now that we've seen all that in terms of cards. We do have a hard drive down here, like I mentioned. You know, in order to get to that hard drive, we're gonna have to take all this uh, apart here. You know, we'll have to take the floppy disk out and to be able to access the drive. And then of course, the information I can see actually is a TEAC drive. So T-E-A-C SD-310 drive is the hard disk. Let's uh, take some contact cleaner here, do a little bit of cleanup and put these cards back in. They've probably been sitting there for absolutely forever. And I love seeing these old computers. I uh, just love seeing the older ones that are still around with us. Our CD-ROM controller, and we'll put that in there as well. Okay, and uh, I just wanna make sure that, see which which slot we're talking about here. There we are. So put some more deoxid, some contact cleaner in there. And we'll put our Trident card back in. And then we'll pop this back in. All right, so we have all those connected again. And the only thing I haven't done, and I just realized that now, was I didn't plug in the LED to the controller card. So I'm gonna pop that back on. Okay, and over on this side, we have what looks like our five and a quarter inch floppy. Now, I mean, obviously it's open from the top here, as you can see, which allows a lot of the dirt to get in here. So it's a very good practice to get these all kind of wiped out, cleaned out, lubricate any components that require that. So it makes a big difference when you do that. And then down here, we do have what looks like a Panasonic model JU257 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. And again, our hard disk, which is IDE is sitting down inside here. Okay, and that's it. Those are our components. I mean, the motherboard stops here, so it's been pretty serviceable if you want to take the board out without having to remove all these components. Some of the OEMs used to have the boards that go right underneath all this, so in order to access those parts of the motherboard, you gotta go through all this stuff. Let's get the bench all situated and see if we can get a monitor, keyboard, mouse, power, and see if we can get this system posting. Let's go. Okay, and here we are. So I have, uh, one, sorry, a couple things. One thing I noticed when I was working on this 
is that I noticed that the power supply had zero screws in it at all. So I'm not sure if the previous seller was trying to troubleshoot this or if uh, a previous person was trying to troubleshoot it. So anyway, it could be a problem with the power supply it may not be working. I do have another AT power supply I can try, so I'm not worried about that. We'll try that if this one doesn't work, but I did screw it back in just to have it mounted properly so it didn't cause any sort of damage inside the computer. So I have that plugged in. I did take some contact cleaner as well, and this is a DIN 5 uh, keyboard. So I did uh, spray that as well and put it in and out a few times just to make sure that that wasn't gonna cause us any uh, grief whatsoever. So I have that all in there fine as well. And I'm noticing, yeah, that's the front of the bezel there was coming off there. Anyway, that seems to be better now. Let's uh, flip the power supply switch and see what happens. Okay. We have 33 megahertz. And nothing. So I'm not getting any postcodes or beeps. Then again, I didn't see if there was a speaker or not. Well, it's giving me some hope. I was told it didn't work. And I mean, it's not working obviously, but it's doing nothing. But we do have the turbo light on. We do have the hard disk light lit up and we have the power light lit up. Usually that's a sign of a grounding issue. It's not doing anything there. All right, I'm just gonna turn it off. And so one of the troubleshooting things I'm gonna do as we go through this, there's a couple things, I mean, there's a couple things we can do. I mean, everybody has a different opinion. Everybody has different methods they wanna try. But the first thing I wanna do is start to eliminate some of the things that could potentially cause me grief. So for example, this sound card, I'm just gonna remove the sound card completely from the computer because it was an add-on card. It's not required for the card to, for computer to function. We'll take that out slowly but surely. There we are, we have the card out. Just in case any of these components are bad and causing problems. And also, and someone pointed out to me in a previous video, it's very possible that the more components you have a bad power supply going on, then by reducing the cards, the power supply can give a false positive or false reading that it's functioning correctly. Okay, so I have that unplugged here. And all right, that looks good. So let's power up back up again and see what happens. So we do have a PC speaker. I just saw it right here. So we know one exists. And we don't have anything. Okay, let's turn this off. Next thing we're gonna do is take out this other card here. This is that audio cable or audio card, I should say, or the CD-ROM controller. We'll just take that out. Here we are. And to do that, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I'll just remove the audio cable from the card as well as the IDE cable. It's very possible that something's causing a conflict or again, it could be the power supply. I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out as we go. All right, let's power back up. Interesting enough, I'm not getting the hard disk spinning up. All right, we'll power this off again. So we have the video card here. Still, we're gonna leave that in there. I'm gonna pull out the IO card. Uh, obviously, it'll complain uh, if the video card's not there, but with the IO card, it should be okay. Let's get that removed. Don't you guys feel like we just did this? Okay. And I'm just gonna leave it out for a moment and try it without. And we have post. Look at that, everybody. <laughs> we have a posting 386 computer with eight megabytes of memory. This IO card is what's causing us grief. Now, that said, it's very possible that the card, which I'm holding, I'm not gonna put it down yet right now because the computer's on, but it's very possible it is that slot, that ISA slot, or it could be something else with the card, something plugged into the card. So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove one of those back plates, move it down a slot to see if that makes a difference. But we have post and you saw it here live. Normally I you know, take the time to edit this stuff out, report back, but I wanted to show everybody what the troubleshooting process was in trying to get this computer at least posting. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off 
And let's uh, just set the card up here for a second. It's not going to cause any grief for us over there. There we are. I'm just going to remove this backing plate. There we are. Lots of dust. And I'm going to take this card and actually I'm going to take some contact cleaner that I'm dropping all over the place. And we're just going to spray a little bit in there just because I want to see if it's the issue with the, the card. There we are. We have that in there. Let's flip it back on and see if it works. And nothing. All right, so we know the issue has something to do with this card. It's not the slot that it's going in because we tried two ISA slots and the chances of two of them being not working is uh, a little less likely. So I'm gonna turn it off again, pull it back out. Let's get that out of there nice and easily. And I'm telling you that contact cleaner makes all the difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the components from the card. So this is the IDE, or sorry, the floppy. And we'll move the IDE. Because we removed all of these components, we can narrow it down if it's the card or it's possibly something uh, in the ribbon cables or something that was plugged into the uh, the card. So I'm going to put it back to its original, uh, back to its original ISA slot here, just because when you're troubleshooting like this, you want to eliminate factors. And so by moving it down, we were able to eliminate the fact that it's not the slot. It could be the card. Let's flip it back on. The hard drive is spinning up. Look at that. The hard drive spun up this time and the system posted. So whatever's going on has something to do with the interface between this card and another component somewhere. I think the next thing we should do is hook up the serial ports just to see, to make sure it's not any of those causing the problem. And we'll do this one by one and continue on the troubleshooting. We'll pop that back in. So now we have the serial uh, connections back in and we will determine if it's one of those. Hard drive spinning up, computers posting, no problem. And that Trident card, by the way, has 512K of memory. That video card, uh, it just came up on the screen in its own BIOS. Okay, so it's not that, that's good news. We'll turn that off. And the next thing we're gonna do, we'll get rid of this IDE cable that's kind of for the, for the CD-ROM drive anyway, we don't need that right now. My gut feeling is gonna go to the IDE, uh, to the hard drive, but you know, we're not there yet. So let's keep on trying this. So this is the floppy. Let's try the floppy next. I'm gonna take this card back out just cause I wanna make sure I get this lined up correctly. And pin one, pin one, and it posts. Look at that. Okay. So everything right now is pointing to this one cable going to the hard disk. Let's see what we have going on here then, if that's the case. So for whatever reason, it does not like when the hard drive is plugged in to the uh, controller card. I'm gonna plug it back in just to see and prove our point and see, we'll just take the card and I'm sitting down the way I am right now because I realized I was blocking everybody there earlier. Get a beautiful view of my arm. Okay, we'll pop this on, make sure it's firmly in there and power it up. Zero hard disk activity, it's no longer spinning up. Okay, so what we'll do then, since that is not working, we're gonna take that cable out. So I'm gonna remove that cable from the IO card and from the back of the hard disk. And there we are. So we have that old cable out of there Let's turn it back on just to make sure that it still works. Hard drive spinning up. And I have post. All right. So we know that cable could potentially be bad. So let me see if I can find another IDE cable here somewhere. Okay, I dug through all my cables and I found a cable that is not keyed here. And when I say keyed, it means one of the uh, one of the pins is blocked off and has the little notch, of course, that'll help you guide in the uh, the interface. I'm gonna plug this into the back of the hard disk based on how it was before. So we have the hard disk 
plugged in. Let's put it to the I.O. cable or the I.O. card. And we'll go to pin one. I'm just going to do the same thing. We'll pop this back into the ISA slot and hopefully that's all it is. Hard drive spinning up. We have post. Can the whole thing problem to this computer be this one IDE cable? <laughs> Unreal. All right, before I go any further, I mean, we have it plugged in. The hard drive is spinning up. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna put all those cards back in and get everything just to make sure that all the resources are used up and to make sure that it's not causing us any difficulties. So I'm gonna turn the power off again and we'll start popping this all back in. Okay, so I've put all the components back in. So we have our sound card, our IDE, or our, I should say our CD-ROM controller card, our video card, which never left the system. And then we already know that we have this, uh, this card in here as well. And I just realized that the screw is not in for that. So outside of that, I also replaced that back uh, filler uh, port in the back there, just the cover, just to make sure we keep, uh, ironically, the dust out. But anyway, we have it back in there as well. All right, let's uh, power it back on and make sure everything works with everything plugged into it. We have post. Oh, isn't that such a great sign, guys? I mean, the sound, the old computer stuff. I'm just going to turn it around so everyone can enjoy the beauty, which is this computer. Okay, so we have everything rearranged now, just so it's easier for everyone to see. So we have our computer, and then we have the 33 megahertz, which is awesome. Turbo uh, doesn't make any difference. I don't know if it's because it's in the middle of startup or not. Okay, so we have CMOS system options not set and CMOS display type mismatch. Probably because of the battery problem that we have here uh, with it just not working. I do have it disconnected right now. I don't know, I mean, it's probably dead after all these years, but being on the end of a four pin header or having the ability with a four pin, I can connect a uh, coin cell, no problem. Okay, so we have run setup utility, no problem, F1. And the keyboard works great too. And again, really awesome not having to worry about that, uh, that Varda battery. And the video card definitely has some, well, I don't want to say issues, but uh, let's do an auto adjustment here. But there's definitely some artifacting going on on the screen. I don't know if you see it in the camera. You probably do in the green section. All right, so we'll go to standard CMOS setup. Uh, yeah, we'll alter to make the system work. So let's see here. It says hard disk. It's, according to this, is January 1st of 1980, which is fine we have eight megabytes of ram and 640k of base memory and for our hard disk we're going to put in the what it said there for sectors and all that stuff so we have 755 cylinders and for heads i wrote down we had 16 and for sectors we had 17 so that puts us at 100 megabyte drive <laughs> here we are 755, 16, and 17 puts us a 100 megabyte disk, assuming that that is the actual one. So we have floppy drive A is 1.2 megabyte, five and a quarter, and then of course floppy B is not installed. I did not see another cable. Oh no, here it is, okay. It is running to the back of this drive. For whatever reason, I didn't see it, but that's fine. Uh, let's go to, I don't know what we have. I'm just going to leave it blank for now until we do some troubleshooting to make sure this works. Because, uh, I, I mean, it's actually, you know what? I'm going to turn off the floppy there as well. Because I don't want that causing us any problems as we go through this troubleshooting to get this system up and running. Okay, hit escape. And we're going to write to CMOS and exit. So while it's running, it should save these settings as long as there's power to the system. There's our Trident BIOS. Counting our memory. It's accessing the hard disk. It's working. <laughs> the hard disk is working. All right. So obviously we have a config sys. Yeah. And it found the CD-ROM drive. Look at that. Obviously there's nothing in the CD-ROM drive at the moment, but uh, cool. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. Let's go to uh, back to the C drive and we'll go to edit uh, config.sys. Actually, we'll, we'll do a DIR. Uh, first, just to see what we have on this computer. So it uh, looks like we do have Windows installed. 
and we do have the config sys auto is at bat files i definitely want to take an image of this drive now that we have it working just because of the definitely at least a backup of the config files okay um yeah okay let's just go into edit uh, config.sys and take a look and so it tells us all the different options that we have loaded up. So we have our high mem and our emm386 enabled, DOS high, pretty standard stuff, files, buffers. We also have our device driver for our CD-ROM drive. That's nice to see. We'll go into edit autoexec.bat and see what's here. So that's our set blaster information. That's for our sound card. And I didn't tell everybody what that sound card was. <laughs> I, I totally skipped that when I was doing the video. I just realized this now because of what I'm looking at here. So it says that we have a Sound Blaster Pro 2 CT1600 card. So that's the sound card that we have in this computer is a Sound Blaster Pro 16, sorry, CT1600 card. So that's what we have. And there we go. We even have a Sound Blaster Pro directory here. So we have the load high, tells us our mouse driver, and then we also have our volume and everything set up for the sound card, as well as the fact that it's detecting the CD-ROM drive using the MSCDEX drivers through that additional controller card. We're gonna exit out of there and we're gonna type in W-I-N and see what we have. Windows 3.1 is my guess. Sure enough, I don't have a mouse connected because <laughs> I didn't think we were gonna get this far. I'll be honest, I didn't think there was going to be a hard disk that functioned in this, and I also didn't think that I, I was gonna put a floppy in there and call the day. Okay, we have program manager loading up, and my goodness, we have a lot. All right, let me uh, shut this down, get a proper, um, a proper uh, serial mouse connected, and we'll be able to navigate this a little bit. Okay, and we're back and I have a mouse installed now, just one of my uh, serum mice. So accessories, we have our write, readme, paintbrush, clock, terminal, notepad, card file, all the goodies in Windows 3.1. And we'll scroll down here and see what else we have. We have our sound recorder, media player, SBP mixer, and jukebox. And all of that would have been installed as part of the good old uh, Sound Blaster card that we have installed. And we have Mavis Beacon, which is, I believe this is our Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing, if I, if I recall correctly. My goodness, look at this. You know what, we don't have any sound. Let's see if I can get the uh, sound working here. Let's plug in the speakers and I'll plug this into the back of the sound card. Well, it's utilizing the PC speaker. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, welcome to Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing. We'll meet Mavis, help for new users, or start the lessons. Let's start. Is this David? Sure. Well, yes. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh-oh. Do us again. A, Z, A, colon. Oh my goodness. I, I hard to do with the filming here and all that, so I'm not going to do this, but uh, yeah, what version of this is this? This is version two. So Mavis Beacon teaches typing for Windows. Version two, copyright rate through to 1992. My goodness, I remember the later versions of this, but uh, not this. Uh, nope, not another try. We are done, Mavis. Okay, yes, we want to quit. It's just so neat seeing that there. And we have games, these are standard games. Uh, let's see what else we have. So we have our Tetris, Cruel, Solitaire, Mosaic. I mean, this computer looks like it was well used. And then of course we have WordPerfect for Windows, Quicken, uh, NeoPaint, Instant Artist, Norton File Find, and Claris Work. So WordPerfect for Windows, let's double click that. Find out what version we have going on here. And uh, yeah, it's just interesting. It's, it's good to have that, I mean, the hard drive spun right up. So those cylinders, heads, and sectors in the back must have been absolutely correct to be the 100, uh, 100 um, megabyte hard drive. About WordPerfect, so there's our WordPerfect for Windows version 5.1. And if you remember, in our, our Thrift Finds video, we have a box copy of WordPerfect for DOS version 5.1. And no, we know that works. Let's go to Startup, nothing in Startup. And then we have Epson. So I wonder what we have for a printer. 
So we have the LQ500 on LPT1, and we have the Epson Stylus Color 2S on LPT1 as well. So those are the two printer drivers that we have installed in this computer. Yeah, I mean, everybody, this is an absolute success that we have this computer. Oh my goodness, forget it. I'm never going to win this. I never won this on a good day. <laughs> Who still plays Minesweeper and can never get it? I can't. I just, I'm not good enough at it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is absolutely amazing to see this computer fully functional and quite frankly, some really cool components that are installed in here. Thinking about back in the day when this computer would have been mainstream, having that sound card, having multimedia capabilities, having all of that stuff as part of the, uh, of the computer. This is, uh, this is a well-rounded system and definitely deserves, this whole disc deserves to be imaged because I don't want the, anything to happen to the hard disk, specifically when it has all the configuration already complete and all the drivers complete. Uh, that makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to work on these, uh, on these systems. Okay, let's go to our outro. And here we are with the cover all back on the computer and such a beautiful sight with the system up and running. I mean, the turbo light is enabled. I don't know what I can do to enable or disable that. We'll have to troubleshoot that in a future video when we go to clean this computer up. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, the computer is absolutely fully functional. I mean, I'm absolutely ecstatic that we do have this computer fully working. I'm really excited that we're able to show this to everybody. And again, I did not expect this system to be working, I'll be completely honest. I expected that we were gonna to have to do some work to try to get this computer up and running. I know we did a little bit of work, but one thing to go posting, but another thing to actually boot into a full operating system already installed. And that just makes me absolutely happy. The second thing is, which was a total bonus, was having that battery that's installed in this computer and not a proper, or not a Varda, which is what would have came with these computers, those little barrel batteries. And as a result of that, that would have destroyed the motherboard by now. And it definitely would have turned into a repair video trying to get that motherboard up and running. But I mean, look, it, it, this is great. I mean, this is another computer that was saved and all because I found something on online marketplace. The guy had no idea if it worked. He said, I flipped the switch. You saw what happened, it wouldn't work. And all it was, was this simple IDE cable causing the problem. This is gonna go right in the trash but it's possible these guys go bad and it just took another IDE cable and boom, we are up and running again. Another one for the good guys, everybody. We've restored a system to the point where we know it works. Now the next steps for the system is to get this all scrubbed down, cleaned up, up and running again, get it nice and looking really good and back up this system and, and make sure we preserve this particular installation. That said, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Makes a world of difference, helps the channel grow. Hit the notification button, change it to all, you'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. Did you own one of these computers? Did you think from the Thrift Binds video and from the beginning of this video, we were gonna get this going? <laughs> I love to hear all the comments. I love the interaction on the channel. I respond to absolutely every one of them. Always making new content. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.